Hello and welcome to my uh, Popper Coon debate and its importance to postgraduate researchers presentation. This is the uh, director's cut, so it's the slightly extended version I couldn't present at the at the Presso conference uh, today because um, because of time restrictions. Uh, <clears throat> my name is David Piggott. I'm a senior lecturer in the uh, Carnegie School of Sport at Leeds Metropolitan University. Um, and this presentation was inspired by my ongoing work with postgraduate students and the value I think that this debate has to their understanding of, of their own research. So, um, yeah, let's get on with it. Um, first thing um, I want to talk about is, well, just give a, an outline, I suppose, to the uh, presentation. So I'm going to go through who are Popper and Kuhn and what their ideas were, the debate between them, uh, how the debate has influenced methodology in the social and natural sciences respectively. Um, and then I'm going to take a bit of time to talk about why I think it's important and um, how, it, how that uh, knowledge of this debate can help you in, in practice. Um, I'll also go into the, the notion, whole notion of choosing a side, you know, do you choose to be in the Popper camp or the Coon camp and I'll suggest that that's probably a bit of a redundant uh, question. Anyway, um, before we get into that, just a quick slide to, to demonstrate that how important these guys are. Um, so, uh, on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that there are references there to Popper's main works or abbreviations to Popper's main works, and also how many uh, citations have been made to those works. So, as you can see there, the LSD, Logic of Scientific Discovery. Um, there are nearly 20,000 citations, conjectures and refutations, 12,000, objective knowledge, open science enemies, um, and poverty of historicism. Uh, accumulatively, work out to about 51,000 or just over 51,000 citations. Um, Kuhn's main text, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, was even more popular, um, 70,000 citations. So these guys in the academic literature, at least, really, really important. Um, uh, on the left hand side you can see I just ran basically a, a quick graph search for, for Popper and Kuhn through Google um, just to compare um, the interest in those topics over time and I guess a couple of things we can see. One is that interest is declining which uh, I hope to put that right today um, and also that Popper in the po uh, popular, for popular searches at least, is always more popular than Kuhn. You know, they fluctuate, but um, Popper seems to be more more popular in, in the public domain, I suppose. Anyway, that's just a quick demonstration of, of interest and popularity. Who were these guys? Well, um, Karl Popper on the left um, lived across pretty much the whole of the 20th century. He's a, an Austrian philosopher, um, started out in, in uh, Vienna, in Austria, and uh, 1920s and 30s, um, did his PhD in psychology, child psychology, and then quickly moved into philosophy and epistemology. Um, and then after the war, uh, became professor of logic and scientific method at the LSE, where he stayed pretty much for the rest of his career. Uh, Kuhn, an American uh, professor, history of history of science in this case. Um, and note that Popper was a professor of logic. Uh, Kuhn was a professor of history, that's important and I'll, I'll raise that later on when I talk about choosing sides. Um, and he he did his PhD and, and early work at Harvard but then moved to, to Berkeley and spent most of his career at Berkeley. So this is who they were. Um, what were their ideas and what was this debate between them? Well, there's a there's a fair popular literature on, on this debate, the Popper Kuhn debate, and they're kind of being pitted against each other. Um, and the, the subtitle to Steve Fuller's recent text, The Struggle for the Soul of Science, I think kind of captures that. So um, they were asking the big questions, the big questions, you know, like what is science, what do scientists do, um, what makes scientific knowledge special. Um, so although they're asking the same questions, they, they came up with really quite different answers. And so I've, what I've tried to do here is pose the main questions and then suggest how I think they may have answered those questions as a way of showing you the basic ideas and the, and the nature of the debate. So if we just take these quickly in turn, uh, the first main question they're interested in is, is there such a thing as 
scientific method or scientific attitude. And for Popper, I think it was pretty clear that he thought there was. He thought there was a sort of ideal type method, um, and that that was science begins with problems. Um, and problems occur when we notice a, a clash between expectation and reality. And when we see a problem, we, we very quickly jump to a solution or a conjecture a solution. Um, and then the method that scientists follow, crucially, is that they then take those solutions and they test them. They submit them to criticism. And he kind of called this a, a process of conjecture and refutation. So for science, this notion of problems, tentative solutions, and then attempted refutations is, is basically what the scientific method is. And the, the attitude that goes along with that is the willingness to test and the willingness to be proved wrong. Kuhn, on the other hand, thought that scientists um, basically had lots of different methods. So there was no single scientific method, but that the method which was dictated by the paradigm which the scientist was was socialised into. So a paradigm is a sort of agreement among a group of scientists about methods and theories and assumptions about the world that they all agree upon and never question. And then what happens then is in normal science, which is a kind of um, much more mundane uh, puzzle solving activity where the scientists just try to extend the reach of the paradigm they don't really test it, they don't really question any of the central ideas um, the second question which is probably more of a, a question that Kuhn was, was interested in was what do scientists actually do and again Popper's answer here in the blue is that uh, he wasn't really interested in everyday scientists he was more interested in the best scientists and the, the, the famous scientists and he said that what they do is that they propound or propose bold theories, bold solutions to problems, and then they test them and they give give up their even if their theories are you know pet theories they will they're willing to give them up if the tests prove them wrong if they're falsified. Um, now Kuhn, this was Kuhn's main point, I guess, with Popper was that he didn't think that that's what everyday scientists did. He said that everyday science is much more normal. You know, it's much more mundane, and scientists. Um, you know, as students, they are um, uh, socialised into paradigms. Uh, they seek to extend the range of the paradigm, but they never actually question the central theory or central methods. Whereas in the Popperian situation, Popperian scientists are much more heroic uh, creatures where, where they're proposing bold theories and testing them and giving them up and, and moving on quickly. And Kuhn suggested in his studies of physicists that that really wasn't what happened at all. Um, so this third question, the, the, the demarcation question, what's different about scientific knowledge? Um, well, for Popper, there was a positive answer there, that scientists um, are very different, or scientific knowledge is different. And science, crucially, is made up of testable theories. So uh, scientific theories have to, be, have to make predictions which could be tested, so that the theory could be proved wrong. Um, Whereas what he called pseudoscience or other theories that aren't scientific are tend to be immune from criticism, they're protected. Uh, whereas Kuhn was saying exactly the opposite. He was saying that, well, scientific knowledge is protected from criticism because it's characterised as part of a paradigm and scientists and paradigms never question those central theories or dogmas. So um, in, in Kuhnian language, you know, this, this movement from... Uh, or giving up one theory would only happen very, very rarely, very seldom, in what he called uh, you know revolutionary paradigm shifts, um, and that means that scientific knowledge is no different to any other kind of knowledge because it's just different. You know, once you break out one paradigm into another, it's just different. It's not better. So, um, for Kuhn, uh, I guess this was what gave re gave way to the sort of relativist theory of knowledge, and uh, and why Kuhn has been most popular in social science. So, as we can see, their influence, you know, Kuhn was really, has been really influential in, in the social sciences, where people believe you kind of almost pick a paradigm which is incommensurable with other paradigms you can't debate between them. Theories here act as lenses, they're not things to be tested or criticised, and the activity then is one of puzzle solving um, rather than uh, theory testing. In the natural sciences, Popper was perhaps more victorious, um, you know, this notion of theories to make predictions, uh, testing, rejecting null hypotheses has become very popular. That's, that's pure Popperian logic. Um, 
theories are to be tested and, and rejected or modified and the logic is one of conjecture and refutation so because these each of these guys has been popular in different domains we have different approaches to science in, in the social and natural sciences I mean that's a gross oversimplification of course but it's it's um, it's probably true to an extent so why is this important to you well um, I think the basic grasp of this debate would change the way that you answer questions throughout your postgraduate journey so in, in the course of my supervision activities these four questions and, and others uh, are things that come up all the time so questions about how can I construct my research what's the logic that my study or series of studies are going to follow um, you know an understanding of this this type of material can really help with that the role of theory in research that's a question all postgraduate students will have to raise an answer at some point you know is theory something to be tested or is it a lens at which you're going to look through um, to what extent do you need to be critical and what do you, are you going to be critical of again criticality is something that's become very you know it's a, it's a it's a buzz term it's always around in postgraduate research but i don't think many people really understand fundamentally what it means and, and what it means for you as a student but again you know popperian approaches is highly critical it's about criticizing theories as the Kuhnian approach is, is less critical and maybe more being more about critical of other paradigms um, what do you claim for your research well again that would change dependent on what kind of approach you, you took or what kind of view you took here you know the Popperian might be much more tentative in what they claim and suggest that they might have falsified a theory or contributed to its falsification or thought of some new way of testing the theory whereas a Cooney might talk about extending the range of a paradigm that type of thing so again the not the knowledge of this debate can really help you answer those those kinds of questions um, so do you have to choose a side well uh, basically no um, you know there's this old notion this is all idea that the Popper Kuhn debate is a is like a jest on switch you know you look at the same thing uh, Kuhn looks at this picture he thinks it's a rabbit Popper looks and he thinks it's a duck um, in reality coming back to my initial point I think it's important to remember that Popper was a logician he was a philosopher and what he what he's developed here is a is a vision of science which is an ideal type because it's a prescriptive theory of how scientists should conduct themselves um, in terms of the method and attitude in their studies so this is really a positive prescription of, of what we ought to be doing whereas Kuhn is, is, a, is a historian and a sociologist and he's really critiquing the practice of scientists you know this notion of science as mob psychology um, and he's saying well this is what's going on right now so I think we can read Kuhn as critique and we can read Popper as prescription and we can accept both views and, and this you'll see you know if you want to follow this up Darrell Robotham's paper I've, I've referenced here is is a useful introduction to that way of looking at this thing um, so do you have to choose sides well, well no and I think people who do choose sides particularly people who choose the Kuhnian side and say well I've picked a paradigm and that's it I'm safe here now um, are really going the wrong way about things uh, in practice well I just wanted to raise this this was a, a Viva question that came up in a, in a PhD examination from a student of mine um, a really good question, two-parter. In what tradition of research do you locate your study and what have you contributed that is new? Um, and in this case, the student in question was able to give a really good answer to this question because, um, well, he gave the blue answer, the Popperian answer. He could have equally given the red or the Kuhnian answer. Uh, and it was only because he'd really immersed himself in this debate and understanding of it that he was able to answer the question really well in this way. And I think there were lots of questions in Vivas that come up um, that are really tricky and without a knowledge of this type of material um, so it's easy to locate yourself in a tradition of research if you're coming at it from a Popperian problem situation and it's easy to say that you contribute something new by saying you've extended the paradigm or by saying that you've tested a theory you've falsified it or you proposed a new one and a new way of testing it so really useful in practice if, if you've got a grasp of the basics here so, um, just to conclude, you know, today's been a really quick introduction to the debate. You know, that I've not had time to do anything more than that, but there's some recommended reading here, um, some general overview stuff at the top there. Steve Fuller and, and Lakatos and Musgrave are great for getting the, the understanding of the debate, and then there's some specific reading on Popper and Kuhn, respectively, 
um, if you want to specialize on each. Okay, so enjoy. Thank you.